Now I'm ready to frame the other walls and run the PEX water supply lines. I'll start by making sure this base plate is parallel to the other wall. These joists are all a bit off, a common problem with older homes, so I'm using some 2x4s to get it all level. And then I'll put the top plates for the other two walls. I'll be installing a pocket door, so I need to remove a good portion of this base plate to make room for the pocket door frame. Everything is looking pretty plumb and level so far, so that's good. When working on the corners, you need to be sure that you have enough wood to screw the drywall into. So every corner typically has three 2x4s so that there's enough wood on the inside corner. I'm screwing in the jack studs and then the header will sit on top of the jack studs. Since this is a pocket door, and because I'm building the door it's going to be super heavy, I have two 2x4s on edge with a piece of half inch plywood sandwiched between them. This will help to ensure that it's strong enough to prevent bowing over time. Next, I'm working on the placement of the shower niche. I'm positioning it so that the top of a tile will meet right at the bottom of the niche so that I won't have to cut any tiles to go around it. At least that's what I'm hoping for. It's tricky to do this because the shower pan, which is one and a quarter inches thick, isn't even in place yet. Add on top of that the thickness of the mortar and the tile, and that's the starting point that I need to work from. I'm clamping these blocks temporarily so that I can make sure everything is level and at the right height. Next, I'll place the niche on top of that to get the 2x4 at the top in the right position.
Next, I have a short wall to build where I'll be placing the shower faucet. I need to place this blocking so that the faucet is at the right depth when the drywall and tile are on. But there's a bit of flexibility in the depth so it doesn't have to be perfect. I could use Teflon tape for this, but I like using pipe dope. These are all PEX adapters that I'll screw on. And then I just have to cut the pecs to the right lengths and get everything in place. The hot and cold water supply lines will come in from the bottom. I'm using a T at the faucet because I'm going to carry that supply line up into the ceiling and over to the sink. It wouldn't be easy to run the water lines for the sink up from the floor because there's a floor joist right up against the brick wall and directly under the base plate of the wall. So that's why I'm taking the water up and over and then back down the other wall. This hole in the center is to feed the shower head mounted on the ceiling. I'll check all the crimp rings to make sure they're properly crimped. Now I'll put in the water supply lines for the sink. This cold water line is also going to feed the toilet, so I'll branch off with a T here. And one last water line to run from the shower faucet to feed the handheld shower nozzle that's mounted on the wall to the left of the niche.
Now I just have to feed those water supply lines back to where I had installed the water shutoff valves in the last video. This right angle drill comes in handy because there isn't enough room between the joists to use my regular drill. These shutoff valves won't be accessible after the floor is down, but the guy who does the next remodel in 30 years from now will thank me for putting them in for him. The space is too tight for my crimping tool, so I'm using a different type of crimping ring and a smaller crimping tool that I have. In this case, instead of compressing the ring, it pulls the ring tighter by pinching that little metal knob at the top. With this tool, you keep tightening until the blue light goes on. I'll just cap off the sink and toilet water supplies for now. It goes off after the drywall is on, and then I'll install proper water shutoff valves. <laughs> 